here has been about square roots and radicals and we're simplifying, solving equations, all kinds of stuff. Today it's the last lesson and it is graphing. So how do we graph the square root, square root of x? That's what we're kind of talking about. This is not number one, I don't know why I put that. Uh, so if we don't know what a graph looks like, how do we figure out what the graph should look like? Okay, what did we do? What have we done? Plug in x values, right? So what might be some good x values for me to plug in? 0, 1, 2... Okay, if I plug in 0, what is the square root of 0? 0. Okay, if I plug in 1, square root of 1? 2, what's the square root of 2? No, it's something. How do you figure it out? Put in the calculator. So if you put in the calculator, so 14 times 14 is like 196, which is kind of a way of saying 1.4 times 1.4 is almost is 1.96. It's almost two. So it's a little bit more than 1.4. If you put in the calculator, make your calculator change it to a decimal, it's about 1.4. What's another number, though, that actually has a nice square root? Negative one. Four. Four. So yeah. maybe instead of plugging in two, maybe you plug in four instead. Because what's the square root of four? Yeah. Two. All right, you can use these, like decimals, it's okay, but it might be easier to use like zero, one, four instead. So zero, zero, one, one, two, one point four, so almost one and a half, and then four, two. All right, what shape is this? Arch. Yeah. Um, actually, what it is, is uh, like, it's half a parabola. You guys remember parabolas, right? We did a lot of those. It's half a parabola, but it's turned sideways. So, like the other half would be down here. That's not. Yes. Anyways. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Do that. Just write it all down. Um, I forgot what I was going to say now. Oh, what's happening over here, though? What do you guys think is happening over this way? Nothing. Nothing. Why is nothing happening over there? Because it's no negative. What if I plugged in negative 1? What would happen? What would it equal? I, which is imaginary, so it doesn't like exist in this plane here. So it does, nothing's going on over here. You guys are right. Nothing's going on down here either, by the way. Um, so if that is true, is this going to go up forever? What do you guys think? Yeah. It actually does. Because you can keep plugging in bigger X's, like plug in a million. Square root of a million is a thousand. So it eventually gets up to a thousand. Plug in a trillion, the square root of a trillion is a million. So it does keep going up, it just goes up really slow. Um, it gets slower and slower and slower, but still goes up forever. That's how it works, whoopsie. Uh, so do you guys know what the domain for this function is? What x values are being used yeah, zero and above. So greater than or equal to zero. How about the range? What y values are being used? Same thing, yeah. The lowest y values right here is zero, and everything above that will be hit. So it's actually the same on this one. So yeah, we're going to be doing some of that. Um, now, Basically, the domain, you cannot have anything inside the square root that's negative, right? That's, that's kind of a limiting factor. So if, if, the, if this was the function, well, what x values would actually work for this? So here's all you do. You take whatever's inside the square root, and then you say it has to be at least 0. 
So in other words, this stuff has to be greater than or equal to zero. So this is kind of the main trick for finding the domain. And then you solve it for x. So you know, add one, divide by two. So in this case, the lowest x value that would actually work is one half. All the x values greater than or equal to one. Remember when we were solving like these equations, like two x minus one equals zero, x was like equal to one half. Remember that? That's kind of what's going on there. Anyway, you just set it greater than or equal to zero, and then that tells you what x has to be. At least one half in this case. Um, okay, so our base function, y equals the square root of x, it looked kind of like that, right? So what do you think would happen from past experience if I did like a plus two out there? Go up, two. up two is correct. All right, a little trickier. What would happen if I put the plus two in the square root there? Do you guys remember parabolas? Like this made the graph go down three, this made it go left two. So when it's directly on the x, it goes left to right. This would make it go left two. Okay, so we're kind of, how about, what do you think that two will do to it? Yeah, twice as tall. I think that's actually one of our problems today. What do you think if I put a negative out in front? And we're kind of drawing on our experience from other graphs like parabolas, right? What happened when we put a negative out in front? Upside down. So it would be like, you know, that. Um, one thing that we, I don't know if we did this, what would happen if I put a negative in that x? Well, all the x values are switched, so instead of going like this, it would go backwards, so it's a horizontal flip. I don't know if we did this in the previous chapters, but that, that is what would happen. So if you put a negative on everything, like out in front of everything, it just goes upside down. If you put a negative directly on the x, all the x values are opposite, so it just flips it like that. But it's never in the other quadrant? Well, if you did that, that, would, that flips it upside down, and that flips it this way, so it could do that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this is a vertical flip, and this is a, well, not that one. This is a left-right flip. It's called a horizontal flip. You guys know the difference between vertical and horizontal yet? No. The sun sets on the horizon. Vertical is the other one. I can never get that in kids' heads. I don't know why. Because I'm not in the of verticals and they run that way. Or in basketball, they might measure your vertical because that's how high you can jump. So that's a useful thing in basketball. All right, we're good. We're ready. Number one, determine the domain. So this is not graphing. Um, so what x values could work for number one? Zero and above. So whatever's inside the square root cannot be negative, right? So all the x values greater than or equal to zero should work, just like my first example. Did you say this was yeah. I might have made it a little too easy, actually. There's no way. <laughs> There's no such thing as too easy. Won't you get bored if it gets... Won't you get bored if it's too easy? Well... Okay, so for number three, what x values would actually work? Okay, you guys forgot my trick? Yeah. We need x minus 4 to be... Huh? Why are your names shaped like that? What? Number 2. 
Okay. We need x minus 4 to be what? Greater than or equal to 0. Remember me writing this earlier? So what does x need to be? Greater than or equal to 4. So that's the domain. And that's basically the trick. Okay, number five. Says square root of x plus seven. Okay, so what x values would work on this one? like number one same thing the only thing under the square root is x the square root cannot have negative so zero and above works just like my first example just like number one the only thing under the square root is x so that's all we have to worry about so x has to be greater than or equal to zero do you need the d uh well not really but on the second section can you just do it. It's not <laughs> On the second section, we have to do domain and range. So this is unfair. <laughs> it's like the least amount of work ever. All right. Anyways, so seven says that. So how would I figure out what x values could I use? Yeah. Yeah, because if I plug it in a positive one for x, would that work? Square root of negative one, does that work? No. No. If I put a one in for x, this would be a negative one. Square root of negative one, does that work? No. What would work? Okay, what trick have I been doing? Negative x greater than has to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, how do I solve this for x? Divide by negative one. What happens in an inequality when you divide by a negative? The inequality switches. Zero divided by a negative one, still zero. So the only thing that works are numbers less than or equal to zero. So in other words, zero and all the negatives would work on this one. Because yes, this is a horizontal flip, that means it would be going backwards, so that's why. Okay, number nine was that graph I did at the beginning, but let's go through it again. And you put it in your notes. Uh, what x values would be nice, and you need three x values for all, all these, at least three. What x values might be nice to plug in here? One, what else? Zero, and four. Because those all have nice square roots. If you want to plug in two or three, you could, but they'll be decimal. Uh, you'd have to like, use your calculator for it. Square root of zero is. Zero. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. So when you make your graph, you might just draw it like that because really we only need the first quadrant for this one. So we got 0, 0, 1, 1. You don't have to do that, I'm just saying. Save some space. Okay, I did read all the directions, but the directions say 
state the domain and range. So, what is the domain for this problem? Yeah, all the x values from zero to the right, greater, do that. And the range, yeah, the lowest y value is zero and everything above that is covered. Y is greater than or equal to zero. Sitting there for like a minute or two. F of x equals square root of plus three. Oh, on eleven it says x to the one half, which meant what? Square root. So I'm just gonna write like that. What do you guys think the three is going to do to the graph? Three. I'm gonna move it up three. What might be some good x values for us to plug in on this one? Same three, because we're just doing square root of x. So zero, one, and one, four. All right, so if I plug in zero, square root of zero is zero, plus three, three. We have to add three on this one. Square root of one is one, plus three. Square root of four is two, plus three. So yeah, it's going to go up three. Okay, so instead of zero, zero, it's zero, three, one, four, four, five. That'd be a little too flat. Slow graph register memory. Yes, make it perfect. Was it perfection? Perfectionism? Not bad. Are you sure? Yeah. We have the same issue in the other class with Whitley. When it, as long as we're not graphing, it's fine, but when we get to graphing, it takes forever. I forgot. I thought you must be doing the evens. Okay, so what x value, what domain, what x values are we using on this? Zero and above. What y values are we using on this? The lowest y value is three, so it's three and above, greater than or equal to three. What's that plus one going to do to it? One up. No. No, no, no. Sorry. That. Left one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But also we got a little bit of a trick here. What x values would be good to plug in? What's the smallest x value I could plug in? Negative one. Negative one. Because remember under the square root we want it to be like zero, one, and four, right? So what x value could I plug in? To make it equal zero. What x value could I plug in to make it equal one? What x value could I plug in to make it equal four? So if I plug in negative one, that'll come out nicely. 
What x value do I need to plug in to make this equal to 1? What x value do I need to plug in to make this equal to 1? I heard somebody whisper very hesitantly. 0. It's not a trick question. Okay, what x value do I need to plug in to make this equal to 4? Because 4, these have square roots, right? What x value would I need to plug in to make this equal 4? Three. Now, do you have to use these three? No. But they're going to come out nice and pretty. Because negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and the square root of 0 is 0. If I plug in 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. If I plug in 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is So yeah, we should find out that this moves our graph left one. So negative one, zero. Zero, one, three, two. values are we using for the domain? Think left and right. What's our smallest x value? Negative 1. So it's everything greater than or equal to negative 1. What y values are we using for the range? 0 and up. Still. I'm talking to Issa. She's the limit. She's the limiting factor. She can watch the video later. You got a nasty look for that. What do you guys think the 2 is going to do to this graph? Twice as, yeah, you could say steep. It'll be twice as tall. Twice as steep, I guess you could say. Uh, what would be some good x values to plug in? 0, 1, and 4 again, because it's just square root of x right here. So these have some nice square roots. So square root of 0 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. Square root of 1 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, square root of 4 is 2, 2 times 2 is 
Zero and up. Okay. Uh, I ran out of room. X minus three plus one. So this graph should move right three up one. What would be some good X values that we might plug in? Three, because three minus three is zero, and that would be a good thing. Okay, what X value would make this equal to one? Four. What x value could I plug in to make this equal to 4? 7. Because 4 has a nice square root. So, 3 minus 3 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Plus 1. one. 4 minus 3 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Plus 1. 7 minus 3 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Plus 1 is 3. 1, 2, 3. All right, so the domain, what x values are we using here? The lowest x value is? Superior. You know how to get out of work. <laughs> 